everybody, Uncle Pip here, and welcome to Saturday, May the 20th. You might see something driving by behind me, I don't know. This video is starting out though, somewhere else, taking place here. Currently we're in the Netherlands, and I hope you enjoy it. It's been a fun time. Yeah, that happened. We're now starting day two. After my big day in Ireland, which was the first video that hopefully you've already watched at this point, I went back to the Dublin airport right on time and I left at, in the evening and I got to Dusseldorf, Germany. My cousin picked me up in Dusseldorf and we drove to a town called Kivlar, and that is the town that you just saw us driving through in this video, and this is the outskirts of that town. Our plan is we are leaving Kivlar now, and we are on our way to the big town of Arnhem. Now, of course, you've been watching this channel for a long time. You know that I enjoy watching World War II stuff, so... That right there was the sign saying welcome to the Netherlands because Arnhem is in the Netherlands. I don't think I've actually told you the purpose of this trip yet, but right now we're driving through the Netherlands and if you're familiar with the east coast of the United States, this looks just like Delaware. Uh, I highly recommend everybody to go to southern Delaware just to experience the Netherlands. This bridge here is going across the body of water right next to Neomegan. And Neomegan is where the Germans had a counteroffensive against the British that was actually successful for a short time. Now we're just north of Neomegan and we are crossing the Arnhem Bridge right now. That is what you are seeing as I speak. That is the town of Arnhem in front of us and we are driving northbound on the bridge. If you're not familiar, it's called A Bridge Too Far. There's a whole movie about it. So what we did was we drove around the town of Arnhem. That's what you're seeing here. It's got some really neat uh, buildings, some cool architecture, and we really didn't stop at all because we didn't have time. Um, but we did drive around the town, I think, total of two different laps, just so we could see it. Because we have something else that's quite important we're trying to go see. It's also interesting to me is seeing all the bricks, uh, the brick road, brick sidewalk, the parking situation. I have no idea what this is, but it looks cool. I'm sure that has something to do with something. Maybe. You can see a lot of bicycles. I don't feel like you see that many bikes in the U.S. There's another good shot of the bridge. Arnhem being behind us, and we're looking south. There's a cannon right in front of us. There's a little uh, memorial park there, if you will. Uh, I've seen other people stop, take pictures of that. Uh, but again, we didn't have the time. Here's us just driving around it, looking at it. And now we're driving southbound to go back the way we came. And again, this is the, uh, the bridge of Arnhem. Uh, if you're also just now tuning in or learning about it, this is where the British were fighting during Operation Market Garden. September 17th, 1944 was the uh, uh, first day of the big battle. And that whole week thereafter was important. So we left Arnhem, drove straight to the town of Overloon. Now, Overloon itself is a battle in World War II. 
133 Americans were actually killed in that battle. But we'll talk about that more here in a second, because this is the event that made me come to Europe in the first place. The Overland War Museum is the host of the largest German gathering, or the largest gathering of German military equipment, basically since World War II. There's a Tiger I in the background. There's an R-75 in the foreground. Here's a half track. All of these things are driving around us. It is quite the accomplishment to be able to see it all. I'm not sure the name of that tank, but I think that was a fixed barrel gun, meaning the turret does not move, which I believe would make that more of a tank destroyer. Here, kitten crud. That's the plural for kitten crud. From my understanding, they actually broke the Guinness Book of World Records on this day with this particular parade. It is the most kit kitten cred at one place at one time driving under its own power since World War II. And you're ready for it? You are witnessing 34 different kitten cred driving together. I think that's pretty incredible. To be able to witness that when I first walked into the War Museum's event, that was pretty special. And we didn't even know that the Kitten crowd were going to have their reunion. Is that what you would call that? And this is a nice shot to be able to see all the people. And now, of course, there's a Lancaster bomber that was uh, crashed in the Netherlands and recovered. And that's what you're looking at here. This is the Overloon War Museum on the inside. And there is too much equipment for me to pick something out to talk about. Because I don't have enough time in this video. If you want to see me do a whole video where I don't have the sped up version, it would probably take a couple hours. I did two hours worth of video for every day that I was in Europe. Um, but everything that you're seeing right now is the actual stuff. This is stuff that was recovered from the battlefields in the Netherlands. Uh, this Sherman tank, from my understanding, there were Americans that died in that tank. Not one like it, not one similar, but this is the actual tank that Americans were dying in. So that, to me, that just, it humbles me. There's a bunch of bicycles. This is a French tank that the Germans captured, painted, and then were using later in the war. Again, that's not something that was somewhat like it or made up. That was the original. And they also have American stuff. Of course, now you're looking at like half tracks and there's some jeeps behind us and there's British planes and this museum is huge and honestly up until before this trip I never heard of it which makes me disappointed in myself so I'm hoping that this video opens your eyes up too if you're an American watching this video I hope you this inspires you to want to go out and see more of the world this is stuff you just don't see anywhere um, different types of wreckers of course you got tow trucks but you got tanks and you got artillery pieces and this massive boat thing that tank right there on the right is super rare it's the only oh, it's the only surviving example in the world where do you find stuff like that of course the one next to it on the left was a T-34 which is a Russian tank um, much more common. They even had a T-34 sitting outside as well. There's a Waco glider. I think that's the first glider I've ever seen in my life. Just the amount of stuff that they have in this museum 
is just fascinating. And I, those were horse-drawn carriages up there on the top shelf. Uh, that's because the Germans had a lot of horses, and that's why that's there. It, it was actually used by the Germans. Here's their motorcycle collection, starting with a BMW R12 and R75s and KS750s. And it's a massive amount of stuff. And then over here on the other side is the American motorcycles. There's an Indian 841, an Indian 741, that's the Harley on the right, the WLA. They just had everything. And these are hard to find stuff. And it blows me away to see that this is the actual stuff. Right there's a grader. <laughs> like, that's, that's incredible. Uh, there's bridge, like pieces of the bridge that was brought in on the trucks. Uh, there was a pole truck back there. There's all the jerry cans. Just imagine if that was gas today, you'd be rich. There's another, uh, or another wrecker over here. It's just incredible stuff. So the, the museum hosts this event once a year and it's open to the public two days, uh, Saturday and Sunday. They close the museum down on Friday just so they can get everything set up. And the tickets are pretty expensive. I think, but to me, 100% worth it. I, I think if you're a student of World War II history, you need to see this museum once in your life at a minimum. And if you're going to visit this museum and you're from outside the country, then you need to do it during the actual event like I did, because that was incredible. Like I said, there's just so much stuff and so much happening here. I don't feel right talking about any one piece of equipment. I had to cut some of this footage out just because it was so much. Then we go back outside to the, to the track and they have a circular track. I don't know how long or how big this track is. But all day long on both days, Saturday and Sunday, they were driving around in circles and you could go out and watch. And if you wanted to, you can even pay and you can ride on this stuff. Like everybody you see waving at us and inside this equipment, those are people that are paying to do it. So you have the opportunity not just to see the stuff, not just to touch the stuff, but you can actually ride on it too. Now, I wanted to. I actually brought some, some money, and I was pretty excited. I really wanted to, uh, to ride on stuff, but there is a long line, so my recommendation, word from the wise, if you do come to this event, you have to strategize. You have to, in your mind, know what's important to you. If seeing a specific piece of equipment, like seeing a Tiger One, is your most important thing, then you have to go there and seek out the Tiger One and just look for it and spend time with it. If your most important thing is riding in a half track, then go to the half track line and wait in line and pay your money and ride on your half track. Uh, for me personally, getting an understanding of what was happening was my most important thing. I thought this half track was huge. Um, now where did this where does all this stuff come from? Some of this equipment is brought in by other museums, by private people. Um, it's just really neat.
be honest with you, I'm not calling out what I'm seeing. And the reason I'm not calling it all out, I want you to do some more research. If you're excited about what you're seeing here, um, then go to it. That's the best advice that I can give you. Because this is, this is cool. after by about Saturday night Sunday Sunday for sure it was still astonishing to see it running around and driving but we started to joke about only seeing the kitten crab just keep coming because there were so many of them and they kept doing their laps uh, another thing that surprised me that I didn't expect was the sounds I didn't really know the difference of a R75 or a KS750, but you can hear it yourself, just how the engine noises are. They definitely sound different, and here's a different angle. I thought it was kind of neat. There was a bridge you could stand on. They also had a market where they had vendors and they were selling stuff. So that was neat. Of course, we went down to the market, bought some things, walked around, talked to some cool people. And here we are back at the main, I call it the pit area. You see some armor driving around in the background and Kit and Crad, there's a bunch of bunch of stuff happening. And again, all of this stuff is original. It's not like it's reproductions, it's not homemade, Bubba didn't weld something in his garage. This is the stuff, the actual equipment. There's a big old tractor, of course. Farmer on vacation has to look at the tractors. There's another tank just driving around.
if you've seen some of my other videos, I did some black and white videos in the past of World War II reenactments that I was at. And I've done some filming of American equipment driving around, some American perspectives on things. At this event, I finally have some decent quality footage of German stuff driving around. So you might see some of this again later in my channel, um, driving around. Now this is the monument I was telling you about for October of 1944, the 133 Americans that died here in the Battle of Overloon. Uh, this particular Sherman tank is their monument or a memorial area for them. I'm going to end this video with some footage of us driving through Overloon, the town, and I wanted to explain to you a little bit what we're doing afterwards. Once we left this town of Overloon, uh, we went to the small town of Noonan. Um, there was no, another battle at Noonan. The Americans were involved in that battle as well. Uh, some of them also were uh, killed there as well. And that's why it was important for me to go visit them. Uh, we stayed in a hotel close to Noonan called Haza, and there's a funny story about the, about Noonan. Um, here I am, I'm an American, I go to the Netherlands, we found a Brazilian restaurant, and when we got there, I ordered German food, and only in Noonan, only in Noonan can that happen, but it was a great visit, uh, we didn't spend a lot of time here. And this was our final destination for Saturday. And you'll have to tune in next week to see what we do on Sunday. Because Sunday is another big day. But we close this with the church here in New York. Hope you enjoyed this video. I enjoyed making it. And uh, we'll see you next time.